Good afternoon, commissioners and members of the audience. I'd like to start the government operations meeting to order. The first item on the agenda is Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Ambor, if you want to lead us. Item number three is adopt uh, the agenda. We need a motion. Moved by Drillette, supported by Sauger. Any corrections, additions, deletions to the agenda? Seeing none, please vote. Item passes. Item number four, approval of the minutes. We need a motion for, th for that. Moved by Drillette, supported by F Commissioner Kraft. And please vote on the minutes. Going too fast, huh? No, you're doing fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Item number five, public participation. Anyone from the public? Come on up. You got five minutes. Just give us your name and address for the record. Okay, Dr. Donald Lee, Warrior, 5437 Queens Road, Shelby Township. I just had two brief comments, uh, Mr. Chair. One being, unfortunately, this week we lost one of the greatest Macomb County public servants that ever was. Um, I had the privilege, along with uh, Commissioner Sauger at the time to work in conjunction with Pat, Pat Johnson, uh, who was not only a fine gentleman, uh, an educator, esteemed member of the Board of Commissioners and Chairman, uh, when we were planning the addition to the Macomb County Jail, the Rehab Center, uh, that was back in 1975, working in conjunction with him. And then the addition in 1983, uh, he worked very closely with um, not only the Sheriff's Department, but all county departments. Uh, while he served as a county commissioner as chairman. And uh, um, I feel badly, I know most of you do too, and I just thought uh, maybe a moment of silence uh, would be appropriate uh, for Dr. Johnson. Uh, secondly, um, as chair of the ethics board, um, I'm pleased to introduce um, Darnell Blackburn, who is on your agenda, he'll introduce himself, but to let you know that uh, Darnell uh, is a former police officer. He's very well known and respected in the law enforcement training community. Um, he's an outstanding gentleman, and I hope that the uh, Government Operations uh, Committee will look forward upon his uh, application to submitted by uh, County Executive uh, Mark Hackle to serve on the ethics board. and. Uh, We'll vote to move it forward to the full Board of Commissioners, and hopefully uh, Darnell will become a member of the Ethics Board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public? Any other members of the public? Seeing no one else from the public, we'll close that portion of the agenda, go on to appointment interviews. Uh, Macomb County Ethics Board, one vacancy, five-year term to expire February 1st, 2000. 23 executive appointment uh darnell blackburn hello darnell come on up to the mic here good to see you uh congratulations on being appointed by the uh, executive and if you can just tell us a little bit about yourself that would be great okay um first off thank you for having me my name is darnell blackburn as dr armbor said a second ago i'm a former police officer Currently, I'm employed by the Michigan Commission on Law Enforcement Standards, which is the governing body for all police officers here in the state of Michigan. Uh, I am a, an adjunct instructor at Macomb Community College. I teach criminal justice classes there. A resident of Macomb County for the last, uh, since 2002, however long that is, <laughs> the last 16 years. Um, currently a resident of Clinton Township and excited about being part of the Ethics Board if you guys choose to have me. Great, and went to Michigan State. Yeah, I am a die-hard Spartan, <laughs> yes, sir. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I will say this. I do have a wayward 19-year-old daughter that attends the University of somewhere in Ann Arbor. <laughs> oh, okay, wow, all right. Well, thanks for, for coming here today. Are there any questions for Mr. Blackburn commissioners at all? Okay, seeing none, uh, thanks for coming here today, and the appointment will be 
on uh, February the 15th. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, item B, Older Adult Advisory Committee. Um, so you have a, a one-page sheet here for the nominations uh, within the commissioner districts. Um, there are also uh, uh, a couple board chair at-large appointments. So I guess the question is, is there any uh, questions on this, on the selections or any changes? There are two pending ones, Commissioner Sauger and Commissioner Drolette, so we're still um, waiting on that. And this final vote for this will be on February the 15th, so I'm sure we're going to work on, on getting those filled. Okay, so I'll open up for questions, uh, Commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Brown. If there's any vacancies, I'll take them out. I've got people I could fill them with. Okay. Loaded with the North End people. Loaded with the North End, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, any questions or comments on this, Commissioners? Commissioner <laughs> Kleinfeld? Um, I just want Commissioners to know if anybody's wondering why we don't have them in front of us, because they usually come in front of us and introduce themselves, is due to what we think will be a lengthy agenda, I, I believe that they were told it was not necessary for them to come. So they didn't just all not show up. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Thanks, Commissioner. Okay, so seeing other speakers on that, that will close the appointment interviews portion of the agenda. Uh, we do need a motion to go into closed session. Chair? Yes. Um, we were moving pretty fast at the beginning, mm -hmm. but normally closed session isn't in front of all of our business. I'm not sure why it is today. Um, but I was wondering, uh, it, that's, it isn't that way in the board rules. We usually only do that in, case, it, in cases where somebody needs it to be first. Well, I mean, we can move. Uh, I mean, there's no one in the audience except for the, is that? Say again. It'll be on the front page of the Macomb Daily Tomorrow. If we could move it down. So, okay, so you want to move the closed session from 7A to, I'm assuming, uh, after correspondence, we'll call it 11B. Is that what you would? That's fine with That's me. fine, that's what you want to do? Any objection, commissioners? Go ahead, Chair Smith. Well, the only person that we're holding up, though, is our, our uh, corporation counsel. By I already went down, down and asked this. him, and he said that was not a problem for him. You don't, you don't mind holding up this? the reporters. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, commissioners, without objection, we're going to take uh, the closed session, move that to item 11B, right uh, after correspondence. So, with that, we'll, we'll go to. Uh, Item number 8A, Department Recommendations, Board Rules of Procedure. And we need a motion to forward this to the Finance Committee. Perhaps we should go through and have explanations on the ones different people are proposing before we make a motion. Okay, so let's go through this. Okay, so it looks like the for, uh, the first page uh, under number sixteen. Every anything in red that those are the changes. Okay, proposed changes. So the first page resolution means get definition from Scott. Not sure what that means exactly. Oh, Scott's going to provide the definition of that. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, next page. Uh, Item number five, you see that in red. Amendments to the rules procedure can be considered after initial adoption pursuant to Rule 11. Um, page after that, looks like there's a couple slashes in there. If, I'm, uh, I'm on page number six, which is, or actually, no, I, I apologize, not page six. Uh, there's actually no page in this, Commissioner, but yeah, if you look on the on, on the line, uh, the items over to the left, so that would be number four. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Okay, this one was mine, and I actually requested that it be deleted because it conflicts with 17. There are no committees that are not committees of the whole, and if 17 says that our committees are going to be committees of the whole, then making B say if a committee is created 
that is not a committee of the whole still conflicts with 17. My suggestion was to delete section B. Um, all, all of section B? Uh, delete B of rule number five. Yes, Commissioner um, Kirabelli. Thank you, Mr. Chair. But if the, ch the chair of the board can still put a subcommittee task force for yes, research or something. Yes, that's addressed which, later. Which is not full board. It could be four members of saying, hey, I need you to do the research on X, Y, and Z. Right, that's, that's addressed later in work groups and subcommittees. Okay. This is just a, just, just a board committee, and that it conflicts with 17. So uh, you're saying that item number 4B, that that whole paragraph be removed? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, Chair Smith. Thanks, and just for everybody's um, knowledge, Scott Smith will be here next Wednesday, and we can discuss some of these further. If you have any questions on them that are, you know, to the legal side of things, he will be here to discuss this. Okay, Thanks. so it seems there's no objection to what Commissioner Kleinfeld suggested, so we'll go ahead and, and remove all of that. Okay, um, we're now on um, item number five. Any questions on that? I mean, there's duties of commissioners. It's just striking out quite a bit and putting in according to Rule 15. So looks like there's no discussion on that one. Crystal, if you have any questions, I mean, just let me know. Um, under number six, you see there's a couple strikes there. Each motion should be read aloud or restated by the chairperson before being debated. So that's been added. That's in there, I mean. Okay, we'll go on to the next page, which is number seven, uh, which we have added in. The chairperson may waive this requirement if he, she feels the board needs, to, needs more clarification before a motion is made. So that's the change there. Item number nine, uh, we're adding in or table, eliminating those other words. Okay, any questions on that page, commissioners? <coughs> we're going fast. Yes. 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 Okay. Well, we have a week, commissioner, and, and, and any questions, additions, deletions, or amendments that you have. You go ahead and get them down on paper, and we'll, we'll tackle them uh, at uh, the next meeting, okay? Um, so we're now we're on the next page, uh, uh, the Section 10, highlighted on the side in yellow, 10. Looks like we're striking out the Government Ops Committee and putting in any committee of the whole. Um, item number 11, um, I'm not going to read all that, but you see those changes underlined in red. Okay. Again, I'm just looking around to see if any commissioners have any questions on that. We'll go on to item number 12, which it looks like, uh, what's that? Okay. So instead of announcing a motion, it looks like they'll be displayed on the computers. Is that what you're saying that means? Okay, either or, okay. Uh, number 13, uh, lower case B is our third capital C. This was moved from the beginning under the okay. commission. I'll be at the center in this one now. Okay, so yeah, item th uh, uh, 13, that paragraph are abstentions of commissioners. Any questions on this page, commissioners? We are moving fast, but at least we have them, and we can go through them and, and tackle it the next meeting, if that's all right. Commissioner Kleinfeld, you have any questions? <laughs> You're looking, I give just, me a look with your eyes. <laughs> what's going to happen is we're never going to clarify the reasons for any of these. Like, for instance, um, um, Rule 15B, the clarification is that I believe there may have been a Supreme Court ruling regarding polling uh, from an individual commissioner, so we need Scott's... Um, there's just context to all these changes, and you're just saying, okay, here's a, you know, I just, that's not what I was expecting would happen today, okay. but you're the chair, so I'm. Well, we do need, we do need our 
Scott Smith to be here too, I think, to go over this better. Among other things. Among other things. Commissioner yes, Romano. Commissioner Romano. Thank you. Going back to Rule 15, as, as Mr. Kleinfeld mentioned, in that Foley and, and the Supreme Court, um, having Scott in here, the only thing I added in the, in the uh, outline here was that polling, uh, no votes of any kind or polling to attempt to determine potential votes will be allowed outside of public sessions. I want something in there that says, with a quorum present, because if I feel like discussing a particular vote with Mr. Carabelli, I want to be able to do that. So I think maybe with a quorum present, they shouldn't be able to uh, poll or uh, allow it outside of public session. Okay. We believe that so. that part shouldn't be in there at all. That's what the question oh, is for our attorney. So we'll add that in there with quorum present. Talk no. Question. Yes, absolutely. 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 Any other questions on this page, which covers uh, 12, 13, and 14? Okay, we're going to keep going here. Uh, the next page is not too much there. Yes. Please, Car Commissioner Carabelli, go ahead. Just a question. Can we get 15 microphone? Sorry. I see that 15 is being st uh, striked out, and I really don't have an issue. Other, I believe that our ordinance on pay and attendance says that there's got to be the beginning and end of a meeting in presence. So I, I thought that was required. I you take it out either way. I don't care, but I thought that was kind of a requirement from the pay ordinance mm -hmm. on 15, where they have three striked out. 15 what? 15, 15 what? Fifteen uh, e. 15e. Yeah. Okay, so I think that has to be in there, but you may just we'll double check, but that may have to be in there. Um, oh, you're on the other one. Yeah, he's on the other page. Uh, he's on rule, 16. rule 16. Okay, order of business. So you're talking about item number three, which is striked out? Well, it should be worded that way because I believe in our ordinance. And again, I could be wrong. I don't have it in front of me because you have to have that vote at the beginning and end of the meeting. So that's why at the end we do vote to close the meeting. It, it is a roll call because everybody's independently voting and you're recording it. Right. So you get the wording may be changed because it's electronic now. But yeah, add that in there. just double check to make sure we're not conflicting with the ordinance. That's all I ask. Okay. And then the next one, Chris I don't want to take Chris was going to put out. that in, so. What you just mentioned. And the next one you mentioned for discussion. Oh, I don't want to take that out. Uh, the next item, four or three, I want to leave that in as well. So, what discussion are we looking for? The next item. Commissioner Kleinfeld? Well, I want to let him address his first. So okay. I'm, I'm asking what, what discussion are we looking for? Oh, on invocation. I'll open up on that. Please. But I've got another page we'll have to go back to because you're moving right along. Okay. Um, okay, with regard to the invocation, a couple of things. The first one is that, um, well, we do know that uh, there's been a ruling that we can do an invocation. What has, what has not taken place in that case, that has taken place here, is that commissioners have been uh, assigned an invocation and have never been asked if they want to be and have never been given a choice as to whether or not they were going to. That's not appropriate, and I know for a fact that there are commissioners that have not been comfortable doing that. What we wanted to add, and apparently it used to be in there, was something that indicated the invocation can be um, uh, a prayer, it could be uh, a, a poem, it could be something of that nature. Because uh, there's been a lot of change in this county and we have all different sorts of religion and um, there's that, but there's also the fact that it's assigned to commissioners. When you come on, you're just told on this day you're gonna be given the invocation and, and nobody's ever asked commissioners and I don't think I don't think commissioners should be put in that position unless what's, unless what's said there opens up for those other things. And Patty said that that used to be there. Can I respond to that? Please. Go, go ahead, Commissioner Carabelli. Well, the way I look at it is this. Every commissioner has not given an invocation. There's been commissioners that brought up representatives of different religions from their community, and they've opened up our meeting. Um, I can... I think of uh, Commissioner Mosheri has done this before. I believe Commissioner Toko has brought in people up here before, individuals to do the invocation. You don't have to do it yourself, 
actually, and Commissioner Druge has brought individuals up to do that invocation. So that part, if they don't feel comfortable, I respect them. If they don't want to do it, they should not have to be forced to do it. So if we want to say invocation, you're not forced and you don't have to do it, it's fine. But commissioners that want to do it, I'll double up if somebody doesn't want to do theirs. I have no problem with that. Yeah, so, I, I go ahead, Commissioner Kleinfeld. You're assuming that the commissioner would be fine having somebody come up and give the prayer instead of them. What if you have, and I'm not talking about anybody on this commission, but I'm saying what if you have a commissioner that is philosophically does not believe um, uh, what the rest of us believe and they are not comfortable doing that. I, I usually give an Irish saying, and I do it for a whole lot of reasons. I do it because uh, I think we always do a Christian <laughs> prayer and we're excluding a large section of our population, so I give an Irish saying or an Irish blessing. But there are people who philosophically actually fight to have these things taken out of government because they don't believe in them. And yep. if we get somebody of that nature on the board, they shouldn't be told that you're in charge of doing the invocation in February. They should be allowed to do whatever it is that they want to do during that time. Okay. Well, you, yeah, amen. The, uh, Chair, Chair Smith wants to comment so on this, please. I think we're all sim on a similar page where a commissioner is not good. I mean, I, and I don't mind finding the wording that says, um, to this, it's not mandatory. This is you're going to be assigned it. If you don't want to do it, please just you know have a conversation with the uh, with the uh, with the board chair, and he'll they'll reassign it. Or uh, and also, I don't I don't mind having that in there either, where we can define that the invocation is not limited to uh, a Christian prayer, right? I mean, that's part of the problem I think that we had with everything is that it can be it can be any type of a, you know, any type of a, uh, you know, I, I don't know exactly how to put it, but I don't have any problem, and I don't think anybody here has a problem with um, at least putting something in there that uh, opens it up for uh, a wider variety of interests or beliefs, um, and also explains that you're not mandated to do it, and that as an adult here, you could probably just stop in and say, because otherwise you have to ask somebody. Someone's going to have to know that you're not comfortable with it, so it would be put on them to come to <coughs> me as board chair or whoever's board chair next and say, not comfortable, would you mind passing that off? And that would be the end of it. So I don't have any problem if we want to craft some language that's uh, all inclusive, so to speak, that everybody feels like you they're uh, being representative, represented if they so choose. Okay. Uh, right, that, and I certainly didn't think there was any way, shape, and form. I, I thought this commission would remove invocation. I apologize. Okay. Um, so, I didn't. I didn't think that. I thought maybe when new commissioners come on, if they're asked, wait. do they mind being put on the list mm -hmm. or something of that nature? I'm sorry. Thank you. So okay. Crystal's sort of got what we just talked about. She's gonna add some stuff in for the next meeting, right, Crystal? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have Commissioner Sauger and then Duje on the list. Yeah, I've been on his board since 1995, and everybody said a prayer or whatever they wanted to do. Some said it for somebody else because they weren't here, and nobody ever objected to it. I think we're wasting a lot of time because we've got other stuff to do than talk about an invocation. It's simple. If you don't want to say it, ask your neighbor to say it. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Duje. Hallelujah. Uh, look, we've got 12 months. We've got 13 commissioners. If somebody's uncomfortable doing the invocation, it's fine and dandy. Uh, if somebody's a firm believer in the separation of church and state and so on and so forth, fine and dandy. As long as we don't have to put up with human sacrifice, I think everybody will be fine. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Okay, uh, seeing no other speakers on this item, um, don't go forward, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Okay, where would you, uh, go ahead, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Thank you. Under Rule 15 on the voting, Give the me one a that's second here. Okay, go ahead. It's the page before. Yep, yep. Uh, number 14 on the roll call vote. Mm -hmm. My request was actually um, to delete that whole section, with the exception of if a roll call vote is necessary because it's never going to be requested we have machines now it's only necessary if the machines are aren't working 
that the the chair will call the roll because that's what we've been doing. They should not have to call it in alphabetical order. They should just be able to go around the table and look because you're doing it on the fly because the machines have broken. It usually happens when you're not preparing for it. So you want to strike the word requested, add necessary, strike clerk, and add chair. Yes, and get rid of all of the rest of this. Okay, any questions? Go ahead, Commissioner Caraballi. Go ahead. I there, think there may be some rules um, on why that is that way. Yeah, yeah, I believe that there are some rules that it is has to be a roll, voice roll call vote. I know it's all on the computer, and that's all fine. But if somebody requests a roll call vote, unless we're, I think it can okay, be requested at any time. Yeah. Because I can request this vote right now. I'm requesting a roll call vote. And we have to do a roll call so everybody is not just raising a hand. I know we got a computer now. But that's why that's in there because any, any why don't we put requested we, slash necessary yeah, that's just check with case we have a check with the attorney on that okay. right I think that's not the point of contention the point of contention is two because two was created so that the clerk would rotate the names every time and if it's been six months since the last roll call vote who's going to remember what the names were that last time so well, that whole section um, um, you know, it says um, the the clerk shall proceed to call the roll in alphabetical order. Um, what what's been happening is every time the roll call has had to take place, either the chair has said all in favor aye, right. or the chair has started and and just gone around and called the names because. I, and I do believe legally, and we can ask Scott, but I believe legally voting on the iPad is a roll call vote because it lists our names. It shows up there. Um, and I, I see the nodding yes um, in the audience. I believe that is a roll call vote. That's not even the part I, ha I had okay. contention but with. Again, point of information, it double, we'll double check with the, with the attorneys. Whoever makes the motion and whoever seconds it, those are the ones that are starting with that vote and it's always went from there all the way through and I believe yes, yes, yes but true. what we've been doing is all in favor or or well because we're doing it electronically but I think you still need to have the language because if this isn't electronically you have to have those procedures good, yeah. so I would just double check with the attorney I'm not one I honestly don't care if the motion maker in the second goes first. So Crystal's I, I'm trying to make it easy for the person who's stuck doing that job. That's so all Crystal's I was trying to do. Crystal's got that, and, and we're going to uh, ask our legal counsel on that one. Okay? Uh, Commissioner Toko, you have any? Your hand was up? No? Uh, I thought you had no, your. No, my point was I just think all of our votes are roll call votes now because. Yeah, yeah that is. Yeah. Well, it's consistent. It's <coughs> okay, Commissioner Duche, yes, sir. Uh, thank you. I think all of our votes are roll call votes, and after everything's said and done, uh, all the motion, it's motioned by whom and seconded by whom in the, um, in the minutes. So I think we've got, every, everything's covered from my standpoint anyway, who made the motion, who, who, who supported it, and who voted A or nay, and so on and so forth. It's all in here. So, right. I don't know if we're getting carried away. Okay, so away. we're going to have to ask legal counsel cause about I, that, I okay? I think it's right. Um, Commissioner Kleinfeld, did you have anything else to add? Uh, what, not till we come up to 17. Not till we come back to 17. Up to 17. Okay. So, um, I guess back to Rule 17. Actually, I'm looking at the page, one of the uh, second to last page commissioners has a few changes there. Um, okay, go, we'll go back to that if that's what you want to. So uh, number 17 highlighted on the left in yellow. Yes. Public participation, five minutes max per speaker, relating to only to issues contained on the agenda 
at discretion of the chairperson. We have stro striking language at discretion of. Uh, also, um, yeah. I wanted to entertain, find out if the board was interested in going to three minutes. There are two hearings of the public that gives the public six minutes at each meeting. I wanted to find out if there was interest in changing it from five. Well, we don't ha we don't have that in here right now, but we'll I don't it know up why for we discussion. Um, no, go ahead, Commissioner it, Kleinfeld. Okay. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. I thought it was going to be in there because it was in the summary of the changes that I was requesting, and it didn't make it in there. So, okay, so um, your the, request at the discretion of the chair. The way this reads, the chair can allow somebody to go longer, but they they couldn't allow somebody to speak on issues not related to items on the agenda. And we and the chair occasionally allow somebody to come up and speak about a veterans event or something like that. I just wanted the chair to have the discretion to do that. And the way that it read, they did not have that discretion. Very good. That's, that's all that was. And I would like to discuss the five minutes. I had, uh, I had that in all of my notes all okay. the way through. So um, you want to have three minutes for both public participations? Yes. For both, okay. So let's have discussion on that. Um, okay, and I'll just open it up by saying my rationale is it's not a big deal when there's two or three people in the audience. It is a big deal on a hot discussion when a commissioner puts something on that's pretty controversial and you have a full audience, um, it becomes a big deal. So, um, um, and- I got you done. Most people become repetitive after they just speak to five minutes. Uh, I know that I might not get support on that, just throwing it out there. Okay, so on the list of speakers, uh, Commissioner Brown. Thank you. Um, we've got to maintain five minutes for the public. That's the least we can do. Yeah, that may be inconvenient for us at times. Rarely do we have this room filled with people, especially since the charter's been formed. Previously, when the old board was around, we had contract negotiations. They had this room filled up with people, and like, the one public participant went for two hours but you know what that's the public's right and uh, I don't think we should cut it back at all thank you thank you Commissioner Romano thank you chair uh, I somewhat agree with uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld but I think we could put something in there in the event that we have as we mentioned a hot topic um, at the discretion of the of the chair um, that they limit it to three minutes I mean if we have five people out there five minutes each no big deal but if you get 30 people up there, it makes a big difference. So I'm leaving that at the discretion of the chair, depending on how many people are out there, the time that they're going to speak. Now, they do this at uh, a lot of the, uh, the council meetings uh, throughout the uh, municipalities, where depending on the amount of people in the audience, and I'm doing it right now. I'm being repetitive. The, depending on the number of people in the audience, uh, it, leave it to the discretion of the chair to let them know that they've got three minutes. My thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Carabelli. Thank you. I, uh, I see everybody what they've said and it makes a lot of sense what everybody's saying. I personally um, don't have a problem with the five minutes and I understand a hot topic but here's the reality. Those hot topics that happened here at the board where the chairperson would say if all 32 of you are talking about the same subject I'm going to afford you the opportunity to speak but if it's going to be the same thing over and over we're asking you to bring something different that we haven't heard to add to the discussion because we want to hear what they have to say and somebody may not be able to communicate in three minutes and they may want to go on for five minutes I'll I'll suffer through the you know three hours I, I'm okay with that but it can be controlled by the chair where they can be notified as to <coughs> if this item is uh, um, to do w with X and they all come up and say the exact same thing say all right we got that part what more additionally can you add to it so you're not repeating and saying the same thing and that seemed to work pretty well for us in the past so that's just my opinion thanks commissioner uh, chair Smith and I'm gonna take my five minutes and uh, I, I agree I was gonna say exactly what you said I think I, I mean I do remember at times uh, kind of you know just prompting the audience to uh, not come up and repeat the same thing that they've that they just heard uh, and and I think we've had pretty good luck with um, our audiences just not you know having 40 people speak maybe five people come up and speak and even if it's similar it's fine I don't see that we've had any big problem and I don't see anything coming in the future and at the end at the end of the day we are the public body where um, you know 
the, the one place where the voices can be heard. And, um, uh, you know, if it means a three-hour meeting, it means a three-hour meeting. I mean, it's just the way that it is. Um, I understand sometimes we all sit there when you hear the same thing over and over again, but um, at the end of the day, it happens so rarely uh, that I think that we should keep it this way and, and, and just encourage people not to be repetitive. So that would be my take on this. Thank you, Commissioner Duje. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I actually agree with Commissioner Romano and Commissioner Kleinfeld. Uh, knocking it down to three minutes uh, has a tendency of having some people keep their comments to a minimum and say what they mean and mean what they say, first of all. Second of all, you can extend it to five minutes or whatever you want because you have, quote, at the direction of the chairperson, end of quote. So uh, if somebody wants to listen to somebody for a little more time, the chairperson is more than uh, has the ability to do that. Uh, last but not least, uh, there's nothing in here that says that the chairperson will control somebody from doing personal attacks during public participation. And I don't know how anybody else feels if, if that's the responsibility of the chair or whoever, but there have been some people that came up here and did personal attacks uh, yeah. that were totally uncalled for, should have been shut down and or thrown out I think personal attacks are in the rules somewhere. Well, these are the rules. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, fair enough. But uh, uh, thanks, Commissioner Duche. Thank you. Commissioner Jolette. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think if it's not broke, don't fix it. The five minutes seems to be working okay. But I, I wonder if it's possible to add a one-sentence change or the, you know, the chair may invoke a three-minute limit at the beginning of public participation if it's deemed necessary. That, sound, that sounds like an excellent suggestion. Commissioner Crystal, did you get that? And that was, does that, uh, so just by a straw vote of hands, is that, does that satisfy all sides, commissioners? Add in a, a section that at discretion. So commissioners, he added a, a a, a suggestion that we had a sentence that the chairperson, if yeah. deemed necessary, could could go down to three minutes, um, if necessary, well, at the beginning of the meeting. Well, the other way. No, so if we see there's 35 people sitting around or 50 people, there, we could say we've got a lot of folks who are limited to three minutes this meeting. If we is see one person, let them talk. Is that a problem, commissioners, on that? I'm seeing everybody kind of talking. So let's let's put it on there. Yes, go. Here's what we got. So it's just my feeling from looking at everybody that we could keep uh, the five minutes in place, but add another sentence that at the, uh, the chairperson, if deemed necessary, could, could bring it down to three minutes. Or we could do it the other way. Or we can do it the other way. So Commissioner, Commissioner Kleinfeld, go ahead. Okay. The chair's <laughs> always got the discretion to do that anyway. Don't have to give him, he already has that power as chair of the committee to do that if he wants. Go ahead, Commissioner Kleinfeld. All right, just with respect to, the, to all of these, I, I thought what we were going to do, because when I came in and gave mine, they were, they were put, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and I thought we were going to go through as a board and everybody votes on one and everybody votes on two, so we know, so we know how the whole board is feeling rather than just the ones that are very vocal as opposed to the silent ones, and that's how we determine things. That's not the way it's happening. I, that's how I thought it was going to happen because of the paperwork that was created before today. You didn't know that. That's not your fault. Um, um, so i just putting it out there. Would you, I think it would go in the future, it would go smoothly. If, if somebody wants to change, then there's a motion because that we did that before and we said, well, we didn't do a, we didn't have to do a roll call vote. We said it, everybody in favor, and if there weren't seven votes, it got scratched off of the mm -hmm. list. So, anyway, all I want to do right now, Commissioner, just is just find uh, a resolution to this three minute and five minute. Right, and you're determining it from those of us who have spoken, and there are people that okay. haven't spoken, and so we don't know what the well, full I don't board have, feels. I don't have anybody. It's any other. Com I'll let the the commissioner speak then. Right. Any other questions on the three-minute, five-minute segment? I mean, a lot of commissioners have spoken on it. Okay. 
So um, are we in agreement? I mean, we'll have to make a choice. Are we going with three minutes or five or five and three? Chair Smith, please. So, I mean, we have a couple different uh, opinions on where it should go. So I think that what we should do is give us a choice on the, all the ideas that we've thought that we've brought out out here, and we put three minutes with the ability to move it to five. We put five minutes with the ability to move it to three. I mean, you know, we're going to vote on this at the next time. We're going to talk about it, and then we'll get everybody's uh, opinion out there or our wishes out there, and we can vote on them as a group, which is what we normally do. So if, that way, if you have an idea that's not on here, uh, we can add it right now. We can add it still during this next week, and we can. I mean, so right now we have a couple different ideas out there. We have leave it alone. We have uh, five with the ability to bring it down to three, which really is already in there. I was, look, I was reading farther ahead. It is really in there that you, the chairperson has that ability. We can start it at three with the ability to move it to five. I'd say we put a couple different ideas on there and uh, see where we're at with well, it. I mean, we have to start <coughs> with one item, go there, and then we can make changes and vote on that. Well, I'm just saying, meeting, th you know. I think what uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld's saying is that some people's ideas maybe sh don't, shouldn't think they've made it onto here, so how will we vote on them if they didn't make it on here? So I say we have something on there where if we have a couple different options, we put option okay. one, we put option two, or yeah. we put option three if there's uh, indeed right, a time got we have it. more than one. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Good suggestion, Commissioner. Um, can, um, can I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I just want to carry on with this. Uh, under Rule 21, public participation, Andre, uh, uh, is where it talks about, uh, you know, all of that uh, may not include personal tax. That's number D4, uh, subset 3. Okay. So, and in, in, in also in there, it does uh, allow the, uh, the uh, chairperson to, um, to limit some times when things are going, uh, you know, over and over repetitive uh, on things like that. So, there, there are some pretty decent uh, pro triggers in here that can that we can limit some of this stuff so just so you know everything in here is not just the the the, the red that we're looking at changing okay so any other speakers on this commissioner sauger yeah, just one last one you know we never had a problem and don brown could attest to this when we had 26 commissioners it was up to the board chair if he controlled it they were out of out of whack talking he'd cut them off we should do the same thing that's the way it was before it was easier then than it is now thank you thank you any other qu uh, any other questions commissioners on the public participation portion okay seeing none uh there's not too many changes left the next page you have those two sections highlighted 19 and 20 any qu questions on those commissioners, there's not much there. Just that I have an addition to that. Ahead, please, um, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Thank you. I have an addition that I went over. Um, I'll go over it again, and it'll be put in writing, and you guys will get it later. Okay, go ahead. Um, 20 was uh, 20 F. Um, okay. I had a 20 G. I had a, a, a request, and that was. With regard to committee chairs encouraging committee vice chairs to engage, um, it has by asking the vice chairs to chair uh, some of the meetings. The intent was that vice chairs chair the meetings to get uh, experience, but that's when the chairs were present. Nobody has been doing that. Um, if, if, if a chair's present, they chair a meeting. If the chair's absent, a vice chair should chair a meeting. Um, so that that line I don't think should be in there I know why it, I know why it's in there and, and how it got put in there but whether you chair a meeting your first time as a chair or as a vice chair you have to chair the first time no matter just what saying item G should be eliminated not the whole thing uh, uh, just just by asking vice chairpersons to chair some committee meetings Unless you say uh, by asking the vice chair to chair committee meetings when the v chair will be absent. Okay, Chair Smith has a comment on that. And, and I'll say again that if something's not broke, don't fix it. And there's plenty of rules in here that we don't even get to year after year after year, but it doesn't mean that we should take them out. I, it's, I, I think that this is in there to encourage you know, the, the chair of the committee to actually get his vice chair involved and actually ask them 
at different times, listen, I'll sit here with you, but I'd like, you know, why don't you chair a meeting for me? Um, it's more of a, it, it's certainly not directing them to have to do anything, so I don't know why we would take out something like that. I'm not sure what the uh, intention of getting something that has a potential positive effect uh, out of the rules that's in there that doesn't hurt anything on the other side of things. So that would be just my side to this. Go ahead, Commissioner Clapham, please. Just a quick response. I believe that was put in last year when the board didn't review it. It was done just between the chair and our attorney. I believe that addition was put in last year. Um, I disagreed with it at that time. But if the rest of the board wants it, I'm, I'm you know, that's fine with me. I just haven't ever seen a chair say, you chair while I'm sitting here. I've not seen that, and I've not heard of it anywhere else. Um, but it's up to the board on this one. Okay, uh, any other questions on that, commissioners? Any other questions? Uh, seeing none, I believe that's the end of the changes to the rules. Commissioner Kleinfeld? I... I do have a few more suggested changes okay. that um, actually won't be contentious in nature, I think. Some of them have to do with like the clerk section. Board Sync has taken some over some of the responsibilities. I've gone over them with Patty. The reason she didn't have them before is we had to break up our meeting for another meeting that we had. And so there were three or four more items that we didn't get to get to. We'll get those in writing and get them to you guys before the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. On that note of changing responsibilities, I know it's not contentious. I would just ask that we go through, uh, through council to make sure any of those changes are going to be uh, appropriate before we do anything with them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so with that, that's, uh, we do need a motion to forward to the Finance Committee. Moved by Gillette support. Where do we have su supported by uh, Commissioner Kraft? Please vote. Uh, motion passes. Item number nine A a resolution to prioritize fixing deterior deteriorating roads. Uh, Commissioner Gillette, we have it. In our uh, item here, the resolution offered by Drolet. Um, any questions on this? I guess I'll, I'll ask this. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask the, the maker of the resolution to, to speak, Commissioner Drolet. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and I'm obviously happy to answer any questions the board might have. But uh, I introduced this resolution uh, out of a sense of what I believe is frustration by our constituents, the people of Macomb County, at the at the condition of our roads. Uh, which we know is uh, wholly unsatisfactory, yet so much of the attention and we hear in the media and we hear at these, uh, these regional summits has been on, you know, expanding the RTA, funding the queue line, other things in transit that may, or may be important to have debates about, but simply aren't as important as dealing with our deteriorating and rapidly falling apart roads. So I just introduced this resolution to um, make it clear to our constituents, state legislators, that the priority of this board, and we believe the priority of our constituents, is to address the deteriorating roads first and foremost, uh, and certainly before uh, the RTA. This is not a, a resolution that has anything to do with SMART, uh, one way or the other. That's a whole different issue. It's saying that uh, while the priority of regional bigwigs or something like that may have to do with uh, the RTA, our constituents have spoken at the ballot box, and I think to us as individuals, at least I hear a tremendous amount more about what the heck is going on with these potholes and what are you going to do to fix the roads than I hear about, hey, can we extend the queue line another half a mile? You know, so my, my intent with this resolution is to, uh, is to send that message to our county executive, who I believe is on the same page, uh, and also send that message, though, to our state lawmakers uh, that, you know, we need them to focus as we are focused on improving that area of our transit system first and foremost. So with that, I'd be happy to, through the chair, uh, entertain any questions that any member might have. Um, well, I'm going to go through the list here, commissioners, uh, which I have a list of <coughs> on the, uh, the computer here. So if you're done, Commissioner Jolet, I'll go on to Commissioner Kraft. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't think Commissioner Kleinfeld thinks I talk enough, so I'm chiming in. But I just want to thank Commissioner Drillette for putting this resolution together. I can't support this enough. And this is just one step to a whole larger process of fixing our roads. So thank you, Commissioner Drillette, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, next on the list, uh, Chair Smith. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Phil, I thought you were about to say I can't support this. <laughs> uh, so I, I have to agree. I don't see this as an anti-RTA. I see this as a pro-roads, and I think that our first concern uh, is, is roads. Um, if you, you can have all the buses you want, but when they're driving on roads that have potholes uh, of, a, of a third world country, um, it, it doesn't make sense. I think we need to fix the infrastructure before we fix uh, the, the, the buses that ride on top of it. Uh, and I'll, I'll also agree with you, Commissioner Drolet. <laughs> Drolet, I'm going to call you that now, too, that um, I, I, have, I haven't had one constituent contact me about needing more uh, bus service. Um, well, I won't say that. I, I do get calls about the bus service, right? We do have a, a concern with that. I think SMART does a great job, and I think they address and, and adjust uh, quickly when there are, are needs out there. Um, but what I get an overwhelming majority of, our constituents contact me about the road conditions and what are we going to do about it and where is it going. Now, we don't have much to say about what we're going to do with it, but I do uh, agree with you that we should say we should fix roads before we uh, increase a bus service that I think in, in, in our area at least is, is adequate for the time being uh, in, in the SMART system. So thanks, thanks for putting this out. Commissioner Kleinfeld. Well, if I knew that was the position you were going to say, Commissioner Kraft, I, I wouldn't have encouraged you to speak. <laughs> a couple of things. Um, we got an email um, from Commissioner Drillette indicating that this is with respect to a position on RCA, not SMART. RTA, RTA I'm sorry. However, the the resolution has a whereas the existing smart system can enact additional reforms to improve service without raising taxes, number one. And number two, the therefore be it resolved, which is the important part, uh, has to prioritize resources on repairing and upgrading the condition of our roadways rather than on expending resources to expand traditional mass transit such as buses, light rail, and trolleys. So that would also apply to SMART and, and SMART's plans and what they're thinking. The RTA, which was voted down, and if they come back again and it's voted up or down, that's voted on by the residents. That's different than the money that gets allotted to us for roads. Um, if, if the state wants to have a statewide vote on roading, uh, voting on roads, a tax for roads, I'm fine with that conversation. But to, to say that it's got to be an either or doesn't make sense to me because it, to me it doesn't have to be. The, se the other email that we got was with respect to uh, mass transit declining, and, and you sent several articles in there. And several ar of the articles indicated that the reason, one of the reasons mass transit is declining is because of the lack of upkeep and, the, and the, the lack of modernizing that our country is doing. If you look around the world, they've got bullet trains. Everybody... Everybody else is thinking 30 years ahead. What, what we do is we think through to the next election. We don't think ahead. So we've got a road infrastructure that came out of the 60s. We're not even modernizing that, and we've done nothing to modernize any of the rails, uh, uh, the subways, any of the mass transit that we have while well, the rest of the world is doing that. And I think that's why it's, that's one of the reasons it's declining. So for that reason, I don't think it's an either or, um, so I can't support this. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Any other questions, commissioners? Uh, I didn't see anybody on the list, but I'll just visibly. Commissioner Sauger. Hey, you know, I heard in the back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, this was the biggest political football that was ever going on, fix the roads. Now it's big because that's what I'm going to run on, fix the roads. You know, the mass transit, we need it. And the mass transit, let's go back on this road bit of it. 
I remember bringing this up at the board here. We had a governor years ago that took away the weights and measures from the whole state. And that caused a lot of potholes and that's going on to this day. And uh, that really bugged me when he did that, but uh, we suffered for it. But, but to keep bringing up, we gotta get this guy to start. I just heard the governor today say, he's gonna try to lot so many millions of dollars to go for infrastructure. And I thought that was great, but I just hope, when's it gonna happen? That's our big story, but to come up here and say, we gotta get this guy to support us for potholes, we all know that's the worst thing in the world right now for us. But to do something about it, they gotta do it up there in Lansing. We right here can do it. Thank you. Commissioner Carabelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am in support of this, and you know, I wasn't gonna say anything, but after listening to the debate, I kind of look at it, we're not talking about rails in the RTA. Every time that shifted here in Michigan, in our area, it's about bus, rapid, rapid, what's the tech, uh, term? Rapid transit, meaning rubber tire. The problem is you don't have good roads, you're gonna take dollars, you're gonna put a system in, and you're gonna beat the, sh the, the, the you're, gonna, <laughs> you're gonna beat them I up. I think we got that, Commissioner. <laughs> you're gonna beat them up. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So the reality is I'm 100% with this resolution because no one's talking about rails up here. Anybody hear about rails in Macomb County? Anybody hear about rails at all? Well, at the end of the day, we're talking about rubber tires that are gonna go on the road and the roads aren't right. So I agree, fix the roads before you even talk about any RTA or anything else to make it real simple. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Toko, did you wanna speak? Just briefly, um, I'm not opposed to further exploring it, but I don't think that we've done enough research or we have enough information to pass this resolution. Um, there's no backup documentation that supports the allegation or the, the whereas that says that SMART can enact additional reforms to improve without raising taxes. I don't know where that information came from, um, and I don't have any backup documentation to support that. I'm not certain what the intention is, is for the board to work with our legislature or, you know, un under the therefore, and what authority we have to do that. So I, I think that we need to do further work on this before passing it. For that reason, I won't be able to support it at this time. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I'm looking at the list here, Chair Smith. Uh, Commissioner Duje. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, okay. Although I think this is well-meaning, uh, I have a problem with uh, taking money away from SMART and using it for, uh, for the purposes of fixing potholes and the roads and so on and so forth. SMART has done um, a great job as far as seniors and transportation in my district. Uh, they've, they've kept older people <laughs> cars off the road and so on and so forth. Uh, but the one thing that I think we really have to think about and think about future-wise is do we need uh, the roads fixed? Yes. Do we need rail service in this area? I sincerely think so. And I think that's where RTA has been short-sighted. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Detroit was left out of the railroad loop uh, between Chicago and Cleveland. So we were kind of sitting up here with no way to get some of the services that rail provides uh, into this area to begin with. Windsor is putting, Canada, Ontario actually, is putting in a bullet train between Windsor and Toronto. We're sitting here, uh, and I agree with, our roads are a mess. But the state hasn't done diddly squat about it. We can scream about it all we want. The amount of money that we could get from SMART if we cut some of this uh, might fix, oh, a half dozen roads. And after everything's said and done, personally, I'd like to see some sort of transportation system to Metropolitan Airport. And nobody's talked about that. Nobody's saying about bringing goods in. And I sincerely think that Amazon didn't come here because we have no railroad spurs to, for them to get product here. So I'm, uh, although this is well-meaning and I think you're, you want to put money where, where everybody's screaming about it right now, 
The problem is, is that this will not solve future problems. And uh, for that reason, I won't uh, support this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Looking at the list, I have next Commissioner Romano. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, I totally support uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Drolet's uh, resolution, 100%. Uh, this past Tuesday, Commissioner uh, Majek and myself were allowed to speak at the City Council in Sterling Heights on our proclamation. And as a side note, we, uh, we brought up the roads. And the following morning, if I received one, I bet you I received at least seven calls from people that congratulated us on giving them information because they're very concerned about the roads, as we all are. But I think if you look at it regionally, you take a smart bus and take it north of 14 Mile Road on Van Dyke, which is a good location, and go up as far as it's going to go. And if you can find more than a half a dozen people on it, you're doing great. Take that same bus, move it south of 14 Mile Road, and it starts filling up. And the closer it gets into metropolitan Detroit, the more people that ride it. But the whole problem is, again, if the bus tires don't have the roads to run on and you're going to experience those kind of problems, why not go ahead? It's a resolution. Let's send it up to our legislatures. Let's let them think of what we're – they know what we're thinking of. Let's put it in writing to them. I don't think it will help or hurt. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. So uh, Commissioner Brown. Thank you. I echo the commissioner before me sentiment. Roads are terrible. This is a resolution I'd support because it focuses the attention and the priority that it needs to be. Not some regional transit authority spending time and effort and money to study something that in the end the voters already rejected. They're probably going to reject it again because they just don't quite get it apparently. But we need to focus on the roads. We had terrible buses up. It's like by North End we got dirt roads out there and gravel roads every time in the spring the roads get up torn up these guys are moving million dollar pieces of equipment on roads that are have potholes they bust axles all the time my son last week drive coming off a hall road seven hundred fifty dollars he had turned into a pothole on the road it wasn't the road commission road was putting in his, his <laughs> property but okay. into his uh, apartment <laughs> complex but seven hundred fifty dollars he's a kid college kid going to school you know <laughs> and it's it happens Thousands of times over. We got to put a. This is focuses the priorities where they need to be. Let's focus on solving our current problem before we uh, go on to create a bigger mess. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next on the list, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Uh, thank you. I wholeheartedly support doing a resolution that demands the governor and the legislature come up with a fix for our failing roads that's a permanent fix not a one-time throwing money at it that is a permanent fix i would like to remove the discussion on smart and the rta from it because that takes away from the focus of what that resolution should be especially since smart and rta our millages that go in front of the people, that has nothing to do with what Lansing should be addressing with regard to the roads, and I would love to do that resolution. Um, I also, uh, Commissioner Leonetti and I on Monday night were in front of St. Clair Shores City Council on the same issue. We were in, thought we'd talk to them for five minutes. We were in front of them for a half an hour on that issue. So getting rid of the discussion on SMART and the RTA and doing a very strong resolution demanding that they do something about the roads, that I would really like to do. And even if this passes, I'd still like to follow up with that resolution because that's the resolution I think we should be doing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other commissioners on the first round? I think everybody spoke on the first. You spoke on the second. Commissioner uh, Kleinfeld, we're going to go on the list here. Second round, Commissioner Drolet. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate the uh, input and discussion everybody's contributing uh, on this issue. There's a couple things I just want to make sure is clear. Number one, this is a resolution that says we should prioritize the roads over the RTA uh, fury, energy, and so forth. It's not about uh, anything diminishing SMART in this resolution. Uh, so I don't know. I think there's some potentially some confusion based on some of the uh, some of the comments being made that in some ways. This is urging SMART to be diminished in any way. It's saying that uh, the RTA is not our priority, yet it seems to be the priority of, 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 a, of a fair number of uh, people in the political arena who are not putting that same energy and attention into addressing our road concerns that we have. 
Uh, second, uh, I appreciate again some of the comments about the uh, questioning the whereas where the existing smart system can enact additional reforms to improve service without raising taxes. And I, I guess uh, I could have included in there some of the things that they have done. You know, the FAST system, which uh, had been implemented recently with limited stops, and a number of other reforms that have been covered in the newspapers that SMART has implemented without raising taxes, I think show that um, we can do more under the existing SMART system, which is, which is serving, uh, and, and more can be done uh, through the existing SMART system. And finally, with regard to the final resolved, where it says, you know, therefore be resolved, it's, we're, we're resolving to communicate to prioritize resources on repairing and upgrading the condition of our roadways rather than expending those resources to expand traditional mass transit. We're not saying don't spend any resources on other forms of transit. We're saying prioritize the roads first over other forms of transit, not abandon any and all other forms of transit. That's an interesting debate that could be had, but that's not what this resolution is saying. So. I, I do appreciate the, uh, the input and the thoughts you folks have on it, and I certainly understand disagreements, but I can't come here as a commissioner and not uh, do what I feel I can do to express to all the people in the political arena that the roads are a much higher priority than all the energy, all the attention, all the regional summits on this RTA, and not anywhere near that kind of energy or interest or focus on our roads. So that's the intent of the resolution. And I'd be happy to look at other resolutions that might come subsequent to this that deal with other facets of this issue. But thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Carabelli on the second round. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to make a clarification. Um, it was mentioned that Amazon didn't come here. That was a big uh, mistake because Amazon did come here are building a building that is almost done in, in Shelby, Shelby Township, yeah. a million square feet and a thousand new employees. So they did come here, and there's no rail because they were all turned into trails up by me. So, but the headquarters, the additional oh, that's, yeah. it was stated, Amazon didn't come here. Yeah. Amazon came to Macomb County. That's a fact. Make that clear. And there's no trail, or there's no rail. It's now a trail. Thank you. I have no other speakers. Uh, uh, let me uh, go ahead, Commissioner Sauger. Yeah, you know, I don't think this resolution is going to do anything going to Lansing, a piece of paper with all the names on. We want the roads fixed. Why don't we do this on Mondays? Yeah. Lansing don't have meetings. Why don't we invite the, the contingent from Macomb County here to a Monday meeting and bring this up to them while they're all sitting out here? And I think that would be more weight than sending them a letter, fix our roads. Let them come here and, and talk to them. That's what I think. Thank you. I don't think they want to come, Commissioner. I, I, I'm going to speak this, now. This is, this is, this is, this, wait a minute, this is election year. So you're going to have them all come out, as many as possible. So think of that. Thank you, Commissioner Sauger. Uh, there's no other, Commissioner Doozy, I'll come to you in the second round. I haven't spoken on this. Um, I mean, we heard from our lobbyists just the other day that it's not in Lansing's interest, the state legislature, to find funding for roads, and, and we know that. And I, I'm beating a dead horse. You know, I'll say it again. It's, it's a lack of funding is, is where we're at. Um, roads in Macomb County are about 51% are, are in poor condition. Ten years ago, it was 31%. There's not enough money to adequately resolve that. That is why we're seeing all these local millages. Uh, Sterling Heights passed a, a local millage. Um, City of Warren has one. A bit, um, City of Fraser, I believe they have one or they're working on one. So all this stuff that's happening or the lack of resources from Lansing is causing this financial stress as it relates to road funding. So the question I would throw out there to commissioners is, you know, what, what do we do? Do we, do we sit back and say the legislatures aren't here, our lobbyists are saying they're not going to do anything? Or do we sort of put our money where our mouth is and say, you know, let's maybe look at maybe giving the voters a choice by ballot initiative if they want to vote for a millage that would go for road construction only bricks and mortar. Uh, that's just the way I think of it. I'm, I'm, I don't like to accept that we can do it. And, you know, I'm trying to look at things that we can do within our power more importantly, give, give the power to the residents if they choose to do that. 
so that that's all I really have to say on that to go further Commissioner Gillette you know as it comes to uh, uh, the financing of this that's that's where it but needs I realize this, is a small first step. this is a small first step but that's where it takes leadership and courage and anybody here who runs for a statewide office I hope you he or she will take that with with them uh, to Lansing as it relates to roads okay that's all I have to say on the subject um, Chair Smith I have you on the second round okay I'm, well I'm looking at the computer here and right. Commissioner Duje go ahead thank you mr. chair maybe, maybe yours needs an impact adjustment um, after everything said and done we got a supply house out of Amazon that's going to be going over the roads that aren't fixed uh, we could have gotten a depot from them the uh, uh, the uh, the headquarters for this area from them too. Uh, we could have gotten more, is what I'm saying. But after everything's said and done, do the roads need to be fixed? Yes. Is this uh, resolution going to be the one to do it? I tend to doubt it. Uh, although the RTA, I haven't been a big supporter of it. Uh, you remove everything about SMART in it, and then maybe we'll talk about it. But, uh, well, uh, it might praise SMART uh, a little bit, but as soon as somebody sees it, they're going to say, okay, SMART's got a pot of gold, and they're going to start dipping into it. That's what usually happens. But that being said, um, I still don't support it. Uh, I, th I agree with Commissioner Kleinfeld on as far as uh, what we should do and who's responsible ultimately for all this. We will never have enough money to fix all the roads in Macomb County. I don't care what we do. Um, there isn't enough millages and there isn't enough money to do the whole thing. Mound Road from 696 to M59, if I'm not mistaken, a couple of years ago was, what, about $170 million? About that, uh, 210. Uh, uh, so you know. we will never have the money for it. And the state has to step up to the plate and even get the feds involved for crying out loud. This is nonsense. Thank you. Thank you. Last speaker I have, uh, Chair Smith. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I guess we'll keep beating a dead horse a little bit, but I just want to point out Amazon. And I, and I read this article. And I have to take it with a grain of salt because of the editor. But um, the, uh, you know, out of the 20 finalists selected for Amazon's investment, several of them don't even have regular mass transit. They don't have a mass transit that we're looking at. So we, and, and I've heard this talking to different people before. The mass transit did not have anything to do with us losing this. So you can take that for what it is, but that that's not what happened. It, it, at least from all accounts that I've received from people who I think know better than I do. Um, second of all. You know, Marv, you said it right. We can't do anything. We really can't do much, right? I mean, we can, um, we can, we can advocate. That's what we can do. We can tell our constituents that at least we're trying to get our voice out there and our opinion out. That if it comes down to money for RTA or money for roads, sorry, RTA, I don't want anything to do with you if that's going to be the difference. And you know, that might be the difference because we're going to be coming up against a lot of local millages, a lot of maybe even a potential county millage, who knows? I know it's been discussed in the past, uh, in, in, in the recent past, that we might have to take this on ourselves, right? Um, because the state's not gonna do anything for us and we've, we've heard it and we've seen it. So I guess what I say is, uh, again, this isn't anti-RTA, but this is a way to show our constituents that there's only so much money, we're not gonna, we are not gonna advocate going for an RTA for your extra pocket money over fixing these roads because that's what it's coming down to we're taking and we're asking our our constituents to pay more money and that's what's going to happen every year to do uh, to do things right so fix the roads have a bus system that i, I can guarantee you um you know it, like i said it's it is declining whether it's declining for different reasons or not it is declining but now we're going to put a new bus system in place so we're going to have three bus systems technically and and although it might work great in a perfect world I think this is a way that we put it out to our constituents. We can't do much, but we can at least advocate for you for these roads. And that's my take on this. Thank you, Chair Smith. Uh, seeing no others, any other uh, speakers on this item? We do need a motion. We don't have a motion on this. 
Moved by Commissioner Drolette, supported by Commissioner Carabelli. We do have a motion now. Um, I see no speakers on this, so please vote. waiting for the results here and uh, item passes eight to four going to item number 10 <clears throat> we need a motion of proclamation commending chief Michael Fye upon his retirement from the Clinton Township Fire Department moved by Commissioner Smith supported by Commissioner Carabelli please vote Item passes um, correspondence from Martha T. Berry, 2017 accomplishments. We need a receive and file motion on this. Moved by Carabelli, supported by uh, Commissioner Romano. Um, please vote on this item. And we'll go into item number 11B of which uh, closed session to discuss pending litigation. We need a motion to go into closed session, moved by Carabelli, supported by Romano. Please vote to go into closed session. And members of the public, uh, thanks for coming out here today. Okay, we're good. Uh, we're now back. Uh, an open session, item number 12, new business. Any new business, commissioners? Chair Smith, did you want to speak? Yes, just real briefly. Please uh, forward your uh, check for this year's uh, uh, donation to our fund to Commissioner uh, Lucido, please. Thank you. Thank you. Any under, other new business? Like. Seeing none, public participation. No one from the public. Need a motion to adjourn. Moved by Duje. Support by Carabelli, please vote to adjourn. Thank you and have a good day.